Democratic side, House Minority Leader Crystal Quaid and businessman Mike Hamra are the front runners. That's according to the most recent YouGov poll. And joining me here in studio tonight is Mike Hamra. Mike, thanks for being here. Let's first start talking about national politics. We'll get to the governor's race in just a minute. But sure. do you support Kamala Harris as being the nominee for the uh, for the Democrats in the presidential race? Yes, absolutely. I support Kamala Harris uh, running for president right now. She's a great front runner for the you know, for the Democrats and the, and uh, she's somebody that we all should get behind right now. She's really energized uh, the Democratic Party right now. Uh, lots of people are getting behind her and I think she'll be a great candidate to run against Donald Trump in the general election. Is there an argument for an open convention in Chicago? I don't really think so. I think she's she should be the person that should be, you know, the one that we get behind and support. Any thoughts on a VP candidate for her? You know, I think there's a lot of great ca candidates out there that could be uh, fill the VP slot. So I think she's uh, mulling through those right now, and I, I'm sure she'll come up with a great choice. All right, now we'll get to the governor's race. Uh, Missouri is a red state. A Democrat has not won a statewide race since, since 2018. Why can you change that narrative? Well, I think it's time. The reason, one of the reasons I'm running uh, is because I'm frustrated with what's happening in Jefferson City right now. Uh, you know, our politicians continue to play games uh, and, and really playing with people's lives. They're not focusing on what matters in the state of Missouri. Uh, for myself, I uh, run a family-owned business here in the state of Missouri. We employ over 2,000 people here in the state of Missouri. I've uh, been in business here for 22 years, and I'm frustrated with what's happening in our state uh, because we're, we're really neglecting the needs of uh, hardworking families, families that are struggling to make ends meet right now. And our politicians really aren't focusing on that. You know, our, our, from a state economy right now, we're growing at about half the rate as the rest of the country. And we need real leadership. We need someone who can create a vision and get people aligned on that vision and then move forward, even where there might be disagreements. Jefferson City is Republican. Republican controlled, but as a Democrat, if you were to win in November, Maybe people will be asking, how would anything get done in Jefferson City? How do you answer that? Yeah, well, for the past 22 years, I've grown our, our business by working with people to create a common vision, uh, seeking alignment on the, that vision, and then working with them. You know, and even where there are challenges and disagreements, being able to move forward, being able to accomplish things. That's how I've grown our business from 26 locations to 200. I'll do the exact same thing as governor, and I'll work with politicians, irrespective of partisan affiliation to get things done as long as it's in the best interest of the state. Since the attempted assassination of former President Trump uh, nearly two weeks ago, there has been a lot of talk about lowering the temperature of politics in America. How can you play a role in that? And if you do win the primary here in, in August and you go up against a Republican challenger for November, again, how can we expect Mike Hamra to kind of help lower that temperature as that campaign goes on? Yeah, well, I am an outs you know, I'm somebody, this is the first time I've run for a political office. Uh, I've been in business for the last 22 years. Um, and what I bring to this is a fresh ideas, new thinking, you know, not politics as usual. Politics as usual right now is about attacking your opponent. You know, we've got to break that narrative up. We've got to stop that narrative. We've got to focus on what really matters and talk about issues that are important to people in the state of Missouri. Uh, that's how we're going to stop this. And we're going to focus on things that are going to really impact the state from an economic standpoint, focus on investing back in our public school system, focus on our health care uh, needs as well, and so many other opportunities in the state that we have. But we've got to get people that are leaders, real leaders, and can make real change and have proven records of doing that. That's how we're going to move things forward in the state. What role should Missouri play in the immigration crisis that's happening at the southern border? Well, look, immigration is a federal issue. Uh, we've got a bipartisan piece of legislation sitting in uh, Washington, D.C. that hasn't been passed. It's been used as a political football. We need to put pressure on our federal legislators to get that passed and uh, secure our borders and ensure that people come into this country legally. Uh, with regard to sending men and women of the Missouri National Guard down there, uh, that's spending money on things that really are the responsibility of the federal government. We should be spending that money on the needs of people here in the state of Missouri. There's most likely going to be a referendum on the November ballot to enshrine the right to an abortion. What would you do in order to make sure that that is carried out and that if it does pass in November, that the voice of the people is, is heard and 
and carried out. Yeah, so, you know, I'm grateful to the advocates across the state who have put a ballot initiative uh, on the ballot in November to give voters the opportunity to restore women's rights to abortion. And as governor, I'll ensure that we protect those rights. I'm confident that we'll get that passed, but we'll need a Democrat uh, in office to make sure that we maintain those rights for women in the state of Missouri. Your opponent, Crystal Quaid, supports eliminating the state's grocery tax. Do you support that? You know, uh, that I'll be looking at a lot of different areas uh, of how to generate revenue to support uh, Missouri, uh, whether that's a grocery, eliminating grocery tax or keeping that grocery tax in place. But as governor, one of the things I'll have to do uh, when taking over office is making sure that we're doing everything we can to support the needs of Missourians, from education to health care to services to Missourians uh, from, the, from the state uh, government itself. I'll be looking at a lot of different things to make sure that we're doing everything we can to support Missourians. So eliminating the grocery tax is not something that you're currently looking at? I'm not looking at that right now uh, as, as, as a possibility. Uh, I think it's important that we maintain revenue, but it will absolutely be something I'll look at and understand how that could impact Missourians. Um, should sports betting be legalized in Missouri? Yes, I do believe that sports betting is a good thing to do. We have that uh, in Kansas, we have that in Illinois, and we're losing a lot of revenue to those states where we could be using that money to support needs of Missourians. As a business owner, do you support raising the minimum wage in Missouri? 100%. You know, uh, we operate in 11 states today. We operate in states where minimum wage has gone up. And the truth of the matter is when workers make more money, they can support their families. But that also means they have extra cash in their pocket that they spend in the economy and it stimulates the economy. So it's good for everyone. And I absolutely support a minimum wage increase in the state of Missouri. And it's $15 an hour in 2026 that if that referendum would pass in November, is that enough in 2026, $15 an hour? Well, I think it's going to be enough. I mean, we're going to see uh, market rates uh, increase as well. So I don't think people will be paying minimum wage even at that point. Uh, like today, uh, we're not paying minimum wage. We're paying over minimum wage for starting uh, entry-level jobs and people that are starting out in, in new jobs. So I'm pretty confident that market will push those wages up as well. Mike Hammer, appreciate your time. Thank Thanks you. for being here.